Okay, so chapter nine is the classification of organisms. We're going to first start talking about, you know, how do we classify them and into what kind of categories mm -hmm. uh, do we uh, classify those. We'll also talk about um, what, you know, how did man come up with this and why is it uh, sort of like arranged the way, the way it is. So we need to talk about terms always when we start these chapters. The first term that we're going to talk about is taxonomy. Uh, taxonomy is kind of a, a way of classifying things, uh, and man loves categorizing stuff. We typically do that a lot. Uh, you know, we, if you give a name, we automatically know some things because of the name that we've given to that category. Uh, so, you know, if we say Japan or Japanese, then we automatically assume that people from Japan typically have certain characteristics that are common among people from Japan or wherever you happen to be from. You know, we, we tend to see certain characteristics that we kind of know are common. And so that's kind of what we're doing here only with all of the living things that God has created. Uh, so taxonomy is just the science of classifying organisms into groups. Uh, and ultimately what we'll do is we, start, we group them into the biggest groups as possible. We may have to have multiple groups. And then within each group, we can subdivide it into smaller groups that have fewer of the overall characteristics. Well, they have all of the overall characteristics, but uh, we're identifying what are the characteristics that are unique uh, in that. So here is an ex uh, example you know, up here, this would be like all, let's say, all the living things that are out there, and then we can break it up. Like this was the animal kingdom, and then we can break it down into a phylum called chordata. So this group doesn't include some of the ones up there, like the worm. Uh, and then we have uh, mammalia. So in other words, they, all the animals that are mammals that were within this group are down here. And then we just keep carnivora, uh, are the animals that eat other animals, uh, you know, and we just keep on going down like that until finally you have the smallest group. So for instance, the dog is part of the uh, genus um, Canis. Canis is, you know, canine, you know, IT we would talk about typically from a dog, you know, a canine unit is a dog. So those are canis, and then uh, the species of dogs that are our pets are called familiaria. So they're, they're the common. So these are just a lot of Latin words that we use for these. Um, the reason why we use Latin, it's, it's a dead language. Nobody uses it anymore uh, for speaking. So we can use it for things in science because the meaning of that of that word won't change over hundreds of years because nobody speaks it. But the meaning of words as we speak them go through changes. And uh, there are words that, you know, means one thing now, but they meant something different. I remember there's one verse in the King James Version because uh, that's kind of the oldest English version or one of the oldest English versions. And it talks about a man who uh, follows God, and, it, and the end of the verse says, they won't stand before mean men. What does that mean? Well, our definition of mean means what today? If somebody's mean, it's what? They're not, they're, they're not nice to other people, right? Well, it's the other meaning of mean that you have in math, what does it mean? What's, what, what's the mean, what's the meaning of mean in math? Average. It's like average. So if you th put that definition in that term, people who follow after God won't be just average people, they will stand out. And you think of people like in the Old Testament, like Daniel uh, and his uh, three friends, they clearly stood out. You know, they were in a 
in a country that did not worship God, but boy, did they stand out. They were actually leaders and advisors to the king, not just somebody who hoed the potatoes in his garden or something like that. You know. So uh, we have two terms. They they're sound very similar, and so they can be a bit confusing. One is the word classify, and the other one is to identify. Uh, to classify means to assign an organism to a particular group. Okay? So we already have this, these pre-existing pre -existing groups, and we take this organism and we uh, assign it to a group. So that's what we mean by classify. The another word that we use sometimes is identify, okay? is to determine the group into which an organism already belongs. Uh, we, it already belongs to an organism. We're not assigning it to one. It already belongs there. We're just trying to identify which is the group that it belongs to. Like, for instance, it's a house cat. Into what group do we put it? Uh, I think I think the house cat, and I might be wrong on this. I, have to, I should check it out. But what's another name for cats? Feline. Okay, well that's the genus name for cats is Phoenus, and then they are not wild cats, they've been domesticated, so I think it's Phoenus domesticus, is the scientific name for a house cat. Not a tiger, you know. Tigers would still be the same genus, Felis, you know, they're still cats, but they're not house cats, you know, they're a different kind of cat. Now, let's talk a little bit about the history of classification. I'm going to uh, bring up something right now that probably will be covered later, but let's talk about the classification that God used in Genesis. Now, way back in Genesis, when God talked about all the different groups of living things, he said that they were supposed to reproduce after their own what? Was the word what kind okay and uh, in Genesis it uses the word kind it's not the same as what we're going to teach you here sometimes we think it comes close to our species sometimes it might be closer to just a genus uh, you know some of the other groupings that we'll have but it's clearly different than the one that uh, that we use, that we're going to use here in science. We're using the one that, because that's what everybody's familiar with, not necessarily that it's the best way. I think God's probably categorization was probably better, but uh, it was, but it had larger groupings. But the one thing that all the kinds uh, said is that they have to reproduce after their own kind. You know, like horses mate and have more horses. Uh, so that was kind of one of the uh, uh, important things for it to be part of the same kind. Now, let's talk about, apart from that, then we have somebody by the name of Aristotle. He is, uh, you know, pops up quite often in science. That's why we used to do things. And he based his groupings on observable characteristics. Let me want to close that door back there. there. Based on observable characteristics. Um, and, and we call this an artificial classification system. They just happen to look alike. And if we find two people that look alike, that doesn't automatically mean that they're, they're actually brother and sister or related necessarily, are they? They just happen to look alike. Uh, so... Here was his classification. He broke all living things into two categories. One he called plants and one he called animals. So he only had two big groups, plants and animals. We have more groups than that today, but that's what he had. And then within the plants, he had small plants, you know, like, like flowers and stuff like that, that, and herbs, things like that would fit into that category. Medium. Uh, sized plants, those would be maybe like bushes and shrubs would be into that. 
and then the large ones would be like trees. Okay, so it's you know what he used is is kind of logical, uh, but that was. And then when it came uh, to animals, he grouped them by by the way where they lived. If they were a land animal, they belonged in one category. If they lived in water, he gave them a different category. Or or if they would fly, you know they would fly through the air, you put them in a different one. So what would be two things that you, in our minds wouldn't seem to go together uh, that would be part of the air? There's a picture of one right there. And we have a butterfly, and what else would he group with that? They have birds. They have birds, you know, because they fly. So he grouped them because of what they did. So he didn't use the same method over here as he did over here. Uh, so, you know, that does create some problems. Um, can you think of an animal that you'd have a hard time deciding what group to put it in? Yeah, penguins. Live in water, right? Spend a lot of time in water, but they also live on land. Okay. And primarily in Antarctica, but there are some that live farther north than that, yeah, in South America. Uh, but, you know, how you, where are you going to put them? Like a, yeah, crab, turtles, frogs. I mean, there's a lot of animals that that go between the two. Which one? Are you, what are you going to call it? You know. Uh, so that's what Aristotle came up with. Now this next, uh, and he had just two major groups, and then he had it divided into three groups uh, with that. And we use that for almost two thousand years uh, before somebody came up with a different method. Now, this guy, have you heard of this guy before? Corollus Linnaeus? In one of the classes this week, somebody was using the word of Linnaeus. And it's this guy here. Uh, he came up with a classification system in the mid-1700s. Uh, so, and it's, we, uh, it's kind of the one that we use today Yes, we've modified his uh, classification, but we've used his idea. We still keep his idea. Uh, and that is he based them again on observable characteristics, but by give, creating more groups. So he didn't have to have butterflies and birds being the same one. Uh, and in fact, he probably didn't even use that as a characteristic uh, that he would group them by. And so he made more uh, developed system than anything we had prior to that. Uh, when you, and, it, and it is much more flexible. We've been able to change it and it didn't mess up his, his idea. We still use it today. Uh, now, this ultimately, in his categorization, we used the smallest two groups to name an organism. Give it, in other words, give it scientific name. What's the scientific name for humans? What's your scientific name? First, it's, it's two words. First one starts with an H. Second one starts with an S. Have ever heard of homo? What's the rest of it? Sapien? Ever heard of Homo sapien? No one? Yeah, I'll grab some yeses. Okay, good. Uh, homo sapien, we're Homo sapien. That's the, our scientific name. The one I gave before, you know, like uh, Canis familiaria, familiaria is a dog, or Felis domesticus is a, is a, um, a cat. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of what's the sparrow. Nah, I can't think of it right now. Uh, but everyone, every living thing has its own scientific name. Uh, the uh, categories always start out broadest at the top, and then we can break those up into categories where, with some distinguishing properties or characteristics that one 
one member of this same group, but they have, maybe this one doesn't have this thing or doesn't have this thing. But as a group, they all have the common characteristics. So it's going to have to be most general. And then when you divide it into smaller groups, you're becoming a little more specific. Uh, so here are the levels that I want you to learn. There's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And I want you to learn them in order. So you want to memorize that. You may want to write that in your notes. Memorize. Now, does anybody have um, kind of a little saying that helps you remember, that you've heard of that will help you with this? Any of you heard this classification system before? Now, the one I learned uh, was, and somebody, uh, Fifth Hour had a different, different one that they had learned, but the one I learned was King Philip came over for Girl Scouts. Okay? So, King for Kingdom, Philip for Phylum, came for class, over for order, for for family, girl for genus, and, and scouts for species. So the, we're just taking the first letter and saying, making those into other other words. You could come up with your own. There's, not, that, there's nothing special about the one I gave. Uh, another student had one, I think Davis had learned something different. Uh, so, Whatever you come up with, you know, for memorizing lists and things like that. Uh, what was the colors of the rainbow? You remember what that was? You know, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. We remember the order by whose name? Remember Roy G. Biv? We all remember. Okay, now up here you can see some of these words have, have because they're more from Latin, they have plural versions and, and singular versions. Kingdom is singular. If you want the plural, you call it more than one king, uh, more than one phyla, you call it phy, uh, yeah, call it phyla. If you want one, it's phylum. Um, then down here for genus, if you have more than one genus, you don't call it genuses, you call it genera. And now, notice what species. Species is could be either singular or plural. We have words like that, don't we? Like if you have one deer, or you can have three deer, right? We just, there's no deers, you know. Now sometimes we change the word like mouse and mice. Or moose and mooses, is right? So in this classification system, here would be some examples of some organisms that they have uh, categorized for us so that we can kind of see how we, we, we would go about doing this. Okay, this is taking just one of the kingdoms, and it's taking the animal kingdom, and it's only taking some of the phyla, Here's one that's called arthropoda. Arthro mean, arthro, arthropoda means jointed legs. These are the, like insects have, you know, they have a, their shell on the outside, right? So these would be jointed legs. So everything that's part of that, all of these have jointed legs. So it, we could take that phylum and break it up into smaller categories where we have a group that's called Calopida, and Calopida are like the centipedes. Centipedes, I think also millipedes. Uh, I've never lived where I've seen so many centipedes. I don't know if any of you have seen those around, they're kind of like this, they have, not the one with, that look like they have a whole bunch of legs, but they're like this, they're really pretty fast. Uh, they actually are carnivores. They actually eat other insects, they're, so they're not a bad thing to have around. It kind of surprises you when you lift up a rock and this thing scurries out from underneath it. Uh, but they belong, the, the centipedes belong to that. Now, the next one over is 
arachnid, arachnida. Arachnids are what? Anybody recognize that name before? Spiders. Those are spiders, okay? All the different things that we put into the spider category. Uh, spiders and ticks and scorpions are all in that same category. Uh, notice they still have jointed legs. That's because they belong to that phylum up there. Then we have another one are like the insects. And we have different kinds of insects. We have some with chewing mouth parts, some with sucking mouth parts. Uh, some have wings, some don't have wings, you know, different things like that. So the uh, Orthoptera would be like the crickets and the grasshopper would be an example of that. Uh, in the next one over, we have Diptera. Those would be the things that are like flies and mosquitoes and gnats and things like that. Uh, the next one over is uh, Lepidoptera are like all the butterflies, for instance, would fit into that uh, class or actually order, okay? But they're all under insecta. And then, now notice this next class here, Osteichthyes doesn't belong in Orthoptera, uh, Arthropoda. It actually belongs to Chordata. They have a nerve cord. They all have a, like a, you know, we have a spinal column that has a nerve that runs down it. They have nerves too. They don't necessarily have a spine, but they have a nerve that runs the full length of their body. So that would be animals, all of these animals that are right over here on this side, that's true of. So do you see how they, you know, as you go down, they become more and more specific. But everything on the bottom, like all of these down here, still have all the properties or the characteristics of this one up and up. They have their skeleton on the outside, and they have jointed legs. And there's probably some other characteristics too, but that was kind of the main one. So do you kind of see the pattern that Corellis Linnaeus came up with? Now, they also have um, a word called domain. Yes? Okay, I have a super quick question. Would a butterfly and a moth be in the same genus or in the same species? I don't know if they, I'm not sure where they become different, but they're not, I mean, I know they're different enough that they'd have a different scientific name, yeah. so you'd have to go back, I think, farther up than genus, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, they might be in a different family, like for instance. So, but we'll, we'll get to more of that detail when we study, we'll actually study the these, um, these phyla in smaller groups so that we can, you only have to learn one group at a time. And like to test you over everything on the animals, you know, plants and animal kingdom would be impossible. I mean, maybe you might be expected to know all that stuff if you were, you know, uh, graduating from college with your degree in biology. You might have to know a lot more like that. But at your level, no, you're just getting introduced to this stuff. Yes, you've had some of it probably back in. What was it, seventh grade when you guys had life science, probably? Uh, so, but we're going to go a lot deeper than anything you ever did back in seventh grade. Uh, now, a domain is a category that's even larger than a kingdom. So in other words, kingdoms would belong to a domain. Okay, kingdoms would belong to a domain. And there's currently, it says, three domains. Okay? Um, there's one that's called Archaea, and into that we put a kingdom of Archaebacteria. So it's a domain, but it really like only has one kingdom underneath it. Then we have uh, another one uh, called Bacteria, is another do domain, and it includes the kingdom of Eubacteria. Notice there's two kinds of different bacteria, so not all bacteria belong to the same uh, domain, nor even the same kingdom. And then uh, eukarya are, is the third domain, and kind of like everything else fits into that one. We have like protista, plantae, that's the plants, fungi, fungi which are like the like mushrooms. 
And then we have animalia, which is you know, everything that you usually think of being some kind of animal. So that's how we classify. So the, those are the three domains. And then we have two of the domains are just the two kinds of bacteria that we know about. And then everything belongs to that third, third one. So organisms in the kingdom fungi uh, were originally in the kingdom plantae. When I was in um, college, I didn't take biology when I was in high school, uh, kind of like some of you. Uh, I moved between my freshman year and sophomore year from Montana to Oklahoma. In Montana, I had uh, physical science as a freshman. The Christian school I went to when I was in Oklahoma had physical science as a sophomore class. Kind of like we're changing over to right now so that next year, uh, sophomores will take physical science. You're the only, you're the last of the sophomores taking biology as a so their sophomore year. But that was kind of thing. So I didn't end up ever taking biology. Uh, so I ended up by my sophomore year. I think I took chemistry during that that year. I was always taking classes with students that were always a year older than I. Uh, so. They used to be part of the plant kingdom, and then they have taken them out and uh, made them a kingdom of their own. Then the animal kingdom, uh, here are the characteristics of the animal kingdom, that of all everything that we put into there. They're all heterotrophic, so what does that mean? What does it mean to be heterotrophic? We've already had that word this year, so what does it mean? Troph means to feed. Hetero means what? Yeah, homo, homotroph or autotrophic is they feed themselves like plants. So this would be yeah, they get it from other person, <laughs> other living things. Maybe eat them. You know, they're maybe carnivores, or they suck the juices out of another organism or, you know, hybrid way. So they're all heterotrophic, eukaryotic. Okay, that's been a number of chapters since we've had that word eukaryotic. What did eukaryotic mean? It's a description of what part? Remember the cell? And eukaryotic had membrane bound nucleus and non membrane or membrane bound organelle. That's what a eukaryotic was. Okay? So that word we're going to use a lot again. So don't forget that definition because that's uh, how we, one of the characteristics that this, if we find a new animal, that's one of the things we try to we look at the cells and what is true of the nucleus and the organelle. Oh, and then, then and then animal kingdom, they're multicellular. They're, all, they're always, always groups of cells living together. So each group can be divided into several groups on the next level. So at the top you have kingdom. Well, actually, we have a domain that can be broken into kingdoms. Then the kingdom can be broken in, into smaller groups of phyla. So King Philip came, class. And phyla can be broken up into different classes. And then each class can be broken up into smaller orders. Each order can be uh, broken up into smaller groups that we call families, and then each family can be broken up into smaller groups called genus or genera, and then each genera can be broken up into smaller groups called species. So we can, we can divide it many ways and have lots of different details. So each group has the characteristics of everything that's above it. So everything above um, a group Everything that's above it, they all have it in common. So, or you can look at it the other way. Each level can be 
subdivide it before you reach the next. That's that's why you turn it around. It's not a good plan. Uh, so let's look at uh, our kingdoms that we've talked about before. There's U bacteria, RK bacteria, and the reason why they're called RK bacteria is because the evolutionists think that they were the very first life here on Earth. So that's why they call them RK bacteria. Those those bacteria that are very, they call very primitive forms of life. Okay. Then we have a kingdom. Uh, Protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. So that would probably be another list that you would want to memorize. So I'm not going to have you go all the way down, you know. But these are the big groups. I'd like you to know at least what the big groups are. Uh, so the kingdoms, you bacteria and archaebacteria, uh, all have one thing different about the cells right from the get-go. Uh, they don't belong with the others because they have prokaryotic cells. Okay, now that I gave you a hint what eukaryotic means, what does prokaryotic mean? Yes? Or a uh, non-membrane bound organelle. Okay, so you had the right. That they have non-membrane bound nucleus. Okay. And then they also have non-membrane bound organelle. So that's what, so by looking at back those, all the bacteria, that's one thing that we do find in common is that they don't have membranes around the nucleus or around the organelle. 